Hello YouTube and today we have a system design video on Tinder for you guys. Yes, in this video you will discover how one can design Tinder like online dating platform during a system design interview. We all know that Tinder works at a massive scale. Just to throw out some number here, Tinder is used in 190 countries and has over 50 million users around the world, which amounts to a total of 1.6 billion swipes each day. Those are some crazy huge numbers for any dating app. So we will see in this design video that how Tinder is able to achieve all of that. But before we proceed any further, if you are new to our channel, a warm welcome to you guys. In case you are wondering that what this channel is about. So we are a group of engineers from fan company who bring the best tips and tricks for you guys when it comes to cracking the next tech company interview. We share the inside story of what interviewers want from candidates during an interview and how candidates can deliver it. With that, let's dive right in. So before we start laying down different requirements and show you guys the end to end flow, Let's go through the agenda so that you guys will have some mental model on what this video is about. So first off, we'll start the Tinder's entire feature set that we think is important from a perspective of someone who has never used Tinder. Then we will see how to break down those features into some concrete requirements. This will be how to evaluate if certain things we want to keep in scope and some that are out of scope of this video's domain. But if you guys think that we missed any top requirements or any extension, do let us know down in the comment section. We highly appreciate your feedback on these videos and it helps us to improve the quality and bring the best content for you guys. After dissecting through the requirements, we will start by looking into the component design. This is where we whip out the sequence diagram to show you guys interaction between different components and where we have to pay extra attention in terms of availability or scaling aspect of the design. Then we will reserve some four to five minutes in the end to go over some of the optimizations and extensions to the design. According to us, this is the most important part of the system design interview since this shows your interviewer, your creativity and general awareness of the different tech available to you. So first, let's start with the basic feature of Tinder. So first up is user registration. I, this is where a user creates his or her profile. They upload some of their finest date worthy photos with some candid photos, maybe. Uh, then next, uh, they write an interesting bio which summarizes their personality, their likes, dislikes, what they like to do while socializing with other people. After that, the user gets to see other users' profile based on their preferences and their proximity to other users. Now, as most of us know, the appeal to Tinder is how easy it is to find the right person based on your liking. Gone were the days of bar dating. Now, people need to find the right person quickly and hassle-free. So if you like a person, you swipe right. If you don't, you swipe left. If in case the person you swipe right also right swipe you, you get a match. At which point a separate window pops up and uh, now you can chat with the user to decide if you want to take this further or not. In short, convenience is the key here. So now let's look at how we can break down the entire Tinder apps end to end flow into some meaningful concrete requirements. So first up, a user should be able to create their Tinder profile by adding their bio and uploading their photos. Second up is a user should be able to see recommendations of other users in their near proximity. This will be based on their geographic location on the map. Third is the user should be able to right swipe or left swipe based on their likes or dislike to other users. Fourth is user should be able to get the notification whenever they match with other users. And we think that the last one is important as the others are as well that users should be able to move to a new location and still get recommendations of nearby users in that new location. So these are all in scope requirements. So what we won't be covering in this video is the direct messaging once the user match with other, with other users. We think that this is similar to any other chat application. And fortunately for you guys, we have already covered this in our WhatsApp system design interview video. Uh, so check that out. You can find the link in the description. All right, so as we have some concrete requirements in front of us, let's try to see the high level component diagram to see the interaction in the real time. So as we always do, let's start with the customer first. So here we have our user. This user interacts with the Tinder gateway to perform any of the three actions. It could be registering the swipes or asking for some user recommendations or just for profile creation. Once the action lands on this Tinder API gateway, 
it gets forwarded to a fleet of uh, these profile creator service or recommendation service or swipes based on the action that he just performed. So let's first consider the case of the user profile creation. So the user information gets hosted in this user profile info database and uh, then we will add the user in the geo sharded index as well which allows the user to be shown in the recommendations for other nearby users. Now, don't worry just yet about the design decision to pick this geo sharded index. We will revisit the decision in a bit during the component design for recommendation and the user profile creation service later on. So after the swipes uh, from the user's Tinder app gets fed into this swipe stream, we will later see the what cloud solution we can use here for this after which uh, these swipes are then picked up by a fleet of uh, matcher worker that calls this likes cache and see if uh, a match happened or not, based on which it notifies both the user if a match happened or not uh, in that case. Now, this might be a little bit overwhelming at first uh, and we agree about it, but let's see each of these specific component uh, for better understanding. At this point, we want to mention to our viewers that it is not that interviewers would ask you to design this entire complete Tinder architecture, but uh, just they will dive deep into one single component. But our main goal through this video is to educate you enough so that you can deal with any question on the real time as it comes your way. With that, let's see how the first piece works, which is the user profile creation. As we can see in the sequence diagram that it is pretty straightforward. We have divided the entire process into two pieces, synchronous and asynchronous. So first, let's see the synchronous process. With synchronous process, user first makes the request to create a profile. The request lands on the profile creation microservice that takes all the information and uploads the photo on the file server in this media file server and uh, stores the rest of the information in this uh, user profile info database. Once that is done, it just publishes the user's current latitude and longitude location information onto this geo sharded index queue. We will see this in a bit like uh, what we will do with this uh, location information and also we have mentioned earlier in the high level component diagram that uh, we put the user's profile ID into a geo sharded index so we will also see in a bit more detail that how does that work. So once this all these three operations happen successfully we send a confirmation back to the user that the profile is created. Now we jump on to the asynchronous process. So by asynchronous process, we mean that this is happening in the background while the user is still browsing through the other parts of the Tinder app. And here we take the location information from the queue and uh, use Google S2 library to map the user's location to a geo shard and add the user in to the index associated with that shard. Now you guys might, might be wondering that why we need to map the user to a geo sharded index. So the reason for that is that since Tinder works with millions and billions of users across the world, we need to segment or shard the data into meaningful chunks. Hence, we use Google's S2 library to convert latitude and longitude information into a, some sort of a geo shard key. For example, if we have one shard for North America in the map, we store all the users that reside in the North America region in that particular shard. So we will only be showing their recommendation to each other rather than querying the India's geo shard index to show the recommendation for North American users. So here you can like see the, the data model for the user profile creation as well uh, when, it, when the data gets stored in the database. So if you want, you can pause the video to study the data mo model more closely before proceeding any further. Now let's move on to the next section of the Tinder system design, which is fetching the user recommendation. So this is where we design how to show different potential matches for a certain user. Now we will see the actual scenario where geo sharded index really shine. So we have this really elaborative sequence diagram for you guys. So here, as you will follow along with us, we can see that the user first makes a request to this recommendation engine to show some recommendations. Now the engine takes the request, forwards it to the geo shard indexer. The indexer then takes the location and the radius information of the user and figures out that which geo shards to be queried to for the list of users. We want to tell our viewers that the secret sauce for getting the correct geo shard lies in a good geo library. And as we have already mentioned that Tinder uses Google's S2 library for this purpose. S2 library has really stood the test of time and is used by other apps like Yelp for their restaurant recommendation as well. 
Now the indexer queries the geo sharded index and fetches a list of users and then it sends back that to the engine and uh, the engine sends it back to the user's phone. So it's pretty straightforward at this point. The main secret sauce is the geo shard indexer calling the Google's S2 library to figure out which geo shard to query to. Now, at this point, I think it would be fair to ask that what this uh, geo sharded index is really made up of. So, since it is doing a lot of uh, heavy lifting for returning the user recommendation at a faster speed on the scale. So to be naive, like uh, we can use Elasticsearch cluster with just one index to do the uh, user fetching for the recommendations. Well, to be very naive, like we can also use DynamoDB to query for the user recommendation, but that would not scale well and there would be performance issues. So, but even having Elasticsearch cluster with one index would not scale as well. That is why we want to use the Tinder's dataset properties of localization here, by which we mean that user living in India should not be querying the geo shard for users in the US. So what we can do is like employ the Google's S2 library. So we can divide the entire map, as you can see here, into a bunch of cells. And these cells are based on the number of users residing in a particular area. So as you can see in this picture that the water bodies like uh, sea or oceans are represented by big cells like this. And the lands region have uh, much smaller cells like this, these here in the North Africa region. That is why US has like uh, three cells uh, or geo shards as we can see. So S2 library has two major functions. Uh, so one is that returning a cell based on the location point that is longitude and latitude. Uh, and also it can return a list of cells based on the location point and the radia around that point. With these cells, we can then query the list of uh, geo shards to find the list of user recommendations. Uh, this is what I believe is pretty amazing and uh, have completely blown our minds while we were doing the research for this video. So if you are also interested in the detailed working of the Google's S2 library, uh, you can head over to our website uh, www.techtextula.com where we have covered this in much more detail. So please find the link for that in the description as well. So now let's take a look at the swipes and the matches workflow. So here we have two actors with us, Alice and Bob in the sequence diagram. And uh, now as you can, as we have already seen in the high level diagram earlier that we feed the swipes into a swipe stream and then later use a fleet of matcher worker to see if a match happened or not between uh, any two parties. So this is exactly what we are doing here. As Alice swipes Bob, then the swipe lands onto this swipe ingester. So let's say if in case that uh, Alice swipe left uh, on Bob's profile, then we send it to the left swipe stream in that case. And uh, then this swipe gets uh, stored into a low cost storage that can be anything from uh, AWS S3 to any blob storage for that matter. This we did for some future analysis of the data, but if in case the swipe was right, uh, it gets forwarded to the right swipe stream. Now we just want to mention that uh, here we can use any sort of streaming service, for example, AWS Kinesis or AWS SQS or Apache Kafka. But for our like uh, service, we are using AWS Kinesis for here. Now we have a fleet of matcher worker with us that takes this uh, right swipe and queries the likes cache to see if a match between Alice and Bob happened or not. Now, if Bob hasn't yet liked Alice's profile, we persist the right swipe again in this likes cache for if in future that uh, Bob likes Alice profile as well, we have a match between them then. But let's say that Bob has already right swiped Alice. Now we got a match between Alice and Bob. So at which point matcher worker sends a push notification via this queue uh, and finally sends the notification back to Bob's phone over the web socket on the Tinder's API gateway. We will also want to process this match onto a separate data store. This can be again like any NoSQL based key value data store like DynamoDB or React or anything. Also here is the data model for the matches. So as you can see, we have two pieces of information here, the likes by both the parties and the timestamp on which the match happened. So if you want, you can pause the video here and quickly look what these different entities are and how their relationship between each other is. Now let's take a look at the use case where a user changes his or her location. So as you can imagine that users might not always stay at the location where they have first signed up onto the app. As humans, we like to travel and we also like to socialize with the localities to know more about the culture, best places to eat. 
And what better way is there than to connect with a real life person over Tinder app for that purpose. Now, as we have explained in our fetch user recommendation section that how a user is placed in a geo sharded index when it first signs up, well, similar process takes place here as well. All we need to do is update the user's location in the correct geo sharded index based on his or her new location information. For performance reasons, we are breaking the entire process into two parts, synchronous and asynchronous. Here, the user sends the request to the location service, which takes the user's location and forwards it to the user's info service, which it then puts the request into a elastic search updation queue and sends a success message to the user. So the user can now see more recommendations from the new user's location. But in the background, the request is picked up from the queue and then a bunch of elastic search coordinating nodes are working their way to update the index in which user currently lies. This allows user to show up in the recommendation of the users in the new location. And needless to say, Google S2 again is playing a huge role in identifying the correct index for the user. This brings us to our next section, which is a little bit of an extension to our overall design. We call it the optimization. So your interviewer can now throw a curveball at you that how can you improve your design? Well, the design is already pretty improved to begin with, am I right? But let's give it a shot anyways. So as we have shown in our fetch user recommendation section that a user's nearby geo sharded indexes are queried to return a list of users for the users to match with. Well, we can refine the search results based on the user's preferences or past swiping activity. What comes to my mind is machine learning, obviously. And yes, we can apply some machine learning here before we return the list of users. So to maximize the chance of a user to match with a potential searcher, machine learning works on two aspects, the feature set to learn from and the actual machine learning model that gets learned. So let me emphasize on that point. So choosing a right set of features is as equally important as choosing a right type of ML model for the success criteria. So here we have user demographics data like age, gender, race, Tinder history, stuff like that. Then we have users Tinder history data, which is like the swipes usage pattern users. And we also have the users bio likes, dislikes, hobbies. And in the end, we have some picture analysis to be done. We can pick these for our features and then we can feed all of these into a ML algorithm such as logistic regression to compute the probabilities of a person liking the other user. And in that case, we can rank the recommendations based on the feature set and the, and the model that we have just learned. So the more the probability of a user has swiping right to the recommendation, the higher it would be on the list. Another fun fact, this is exactly what Tinder is also doing in reality. You can check out their blog for more details. There they have explained that how they worked out Elasticsearch's performance issues to work this ML algorithm out. So pretty interesting piece of literature. Do give it a check out. You can find the link in the description. With this optimization, we would like to wrap this video. So with this design, we have learned that how Tinder uses Google's S2 library to shard their database based on users' location information. We also saw that how matches use case really work in the background and also what different technologies Tinder employ to scale their app. We also have similar videos like this in our system design playlist. So for which you can press the link here or find the link in the description as well to find out more. We also have the detailed explanation of the design on our blog as well, www.techtakshila.com. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. We would really appreciate that. And also subscribe to our channel to get future updates on the similar system design videos. Also, if you have any feedback or any suggestions for future videos, do let us know down in the comment section. Until then, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Twitter is coming up next.